Well, how's everyone feeling today? Isn't it a great day to be a Packer fan? <laughs> last, last hour, I gave someone a really hard time about it. Um, I am a 49er fan. I tell you, what a good day to be, um, to be up and walking around and smiling, right? Um, I tell you, I, I want to thank you for being here today. Um, it's an honor and a privilege every time I have a chance to come up and to share what the Lord has been working with me on in my heart and in my life. And I pray that it will be a blessing to you. We have been talking and focusing all month on Jesus changing everything. How many of you have started experiencing transformation? Things that God is starting to work on you on and things that God is starting to do inside of you. You know, we can set off these New Year's resolutions, but it's very important that we have some help in order to achieve those. And today I want to um, lay out two things established. I kind of want to do a object lesson, if you will, and be a very practical message today. And you see these two tables that we have here. I'm going to use them throughout um, the service today. Um, this table here is going to represent the flesh, fleshly desires. Can everybody say that? Fleshly desires. This table over here is going to represent the Holy Spirit. Can you say spiritual desires? Spiritual desires. And we're going to talk about these two and how they're at war with one another and the struggle that in your life that you're constantly experiencing every day, day after day, as a result of this war that's happening. How many of you understand that right now there is a supernatural realm and there are things happening that you cannot see? And do you understand that there are things happening in the natural that you can see that are affecting the supernatural? So what you must understand is that every decision and everything that you do has an impact on the spiritual realm. I love to tell people everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. How you treat your family, how you treat your children, how we treat one another. When I'm comparing myself to other people, did you know the Bible said we should not compare? One of the biggest challenges with social media right now is guess what? We have these curated profiles and lifestyles and we compare ourselves. I wanna challenge you today to really evaluate which of these are you giving yourself to. And we're going to talk about it in the context biblically of fruit. The Bible calls it good fruit. It says that the Spirit of God will produce good fruit in you. And that fruit is identified in the names of like love and joy and peace. And these are things that begin to, to show and manifest in your life when you surrender and you're more to this side of the Holy Spirit. When you give in to the fleshly side of life, your desires, your proclivities, the things that, that, that feel natural and feel good to you, quite often we begin to produce fruit that is different and opposing to what God desires for our life. I want to set the stage for today. We're going to do a lot of, can we read the Bible together today? Um, it's God's word that won't return void. Many of the things I will say you may or may not remember, but I'm going to tell you the word of God is going to stick with you. And I want to allow us to read together. Can we read together responsibly and, and corporately? We're going to throw up verses on the screen today, and I just want you to read with me. And uh, we're going to understand and unpack this together. Amen? All right. So um, if we can bring the first slide up. Um, um, this is a prayer um, that I pray often. In order for me to allow Jesus to change everything, I need to make it a part of my, my daily prayer. Consistently, I pray to God and I ask him prayers like this. Would you read this with me? Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. That's a song, by the way. And I pray that often over my life. Here's another one I love to pray. Um, let's bring the next one up. 
Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Now, I want to warn you, someone came up to me after um, the 9, 930 service, and they said, you forgot to warn people that if they pray this prayer, they better be ready. <laughs> I've prayed it in my life, and boy, does God answer. And here's what it says. Let's read this together. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Now, hold on. Before you resist this verse, remember we were just standing up and we were offering what? Hallelujahs. And we say, God, I have nothing but to offer my hallelujahs to you. And I want you to understand that God will respond to those offerings. But what he really wants more than your words is you, your heart, your commitment. And, you know, as we look at this, we ask God, God, search me. Search me and examine me and know my heart. And, and Lord, if there's anything in me that offends you, would you point it out? Would you reveal it to me? Now, how many of y'all have someone in your life that loves to point out things that offend them? <laughs> Husband and wives, you know, the wife be like, you know, your breath offends me, you know? <laughs> I'm only really kidding. You know, but things that she may say or he may say, and we kind of get irritated by those things, don't we? We don't like when people point out and show us the things that are really not good about us. But I'm going to tell you, when God does it, God is doing it because of his love for us, and he desires the very best for us. He desires fruit in your life that comes out that is good fruit and not evil fruit. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a person sow, that shall they also reap. So if we plant an apple tree, we should get oranges, right? Often we live our life that way. We think that I can do the things that the flesh tell me to do. I can respond to my wife in any kind of way, just the way I feel. I can have outbursts of anger. I can be mean-spirited. I can be jealous, and I can have selfish ambition. And by the way, God is going to bless my life. I watch all kinds of things instead of reading the Bible, instead of praying, instead of spending time. You know, God, I mean, you know, I mean, I'll be in church on Sunday. But instead of me doing all those things, I think I just want to binge here for the next couple of days and kind of veg out. And, you know, God, um, it's, it's football season and, you know, Super Bowl. Guys, I am not saying any of these things are inherently wrong. But I am saying to you that if this is what you feed the most, what voice are you going to listen to? Let's look in the word of God. Galatians, um, oh, sorry, one more verse, uh, one more foundation verse. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, let's read this together. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Wow. <clears throat> What this verse is really saying, and I want to remind you if I can take you back and, and, and give you a reminder. I love to quote C.S. Lewis. I quoted it the first hour. Um, C.S. Lewis says that people need to be reminded more than instructed. Today, I'm hoping to remind you. I want to remind you that the things in the world will what? Pass away. How many of y'all remember COVID? All systems failed. Things that we didn't think would fail. Infrastructure, systems failed. What I'm trying to say to you is that we probably ought to be careful putting our weight on the things in this world. I think where we ought to be really putting our confidence and our hope is in who? God and the Holy Spirit. I love the old hymn song that says, my hope is built on nothing less 
than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You may be here today and you say, hey, look, Pastor, um, I'm, I'm following the example here of what you're doing, but I really don't understand this thing about Holy Spirit or this thing about flesh. And I want to tell you that you've come to the right place. Because being here, what we want to actually teach and share and, and remind those who know and instruct those who don't know is to understand that there is a real God who loves you. And you can enter into a covenant relationship with him. And when I talk about a covenant relationship, here's what I want you to understand. I'm not talking simply about raising your hand and repeating words that I tell you to say. I'm not talking about simply coming and kneeling and praying. Those things are fine and they should happen. But I'm talking about a true heart commitment where you are saying, God, all that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I now and forever give to you. God, I want to enter into a covenant relationship with you. I'm willing to really give you control of my future. You're going to sit on the throne of my life. I'm going to let you make the decisions for me. Instead, in the world today, we're being told to rely on simply logics. And I say the word simply logics because I want to say to you, the Bible is not anti-intellectual. Those who love the Lord, those who serve Jesus are not anti-intellectual. But what's important is to understand that there comes a point where logic and the finite cannot understand the infinite. So at that point where the finite and the logics do not come together, I have to understand that there is a God, a supreme being above all things. Amen? Amen. Let's go to um, the main slide. We're going um, to be talking today about producing good fruit in your life. How many of you want to produce good fruit and not evil? Amen. How many of you want the things, the harvest that you are pulling out of your life, regardless of what's going on in life, the harvest that you're pulling and reaping, the fruit that's coming out of you, in those moments are things that please God, things that are right with God, things that are, are wonderful. We're going to go to Galatians 5, 16, and let's read this together. So it says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Next slide. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's hold, hold there for a minute. Look at the list. I stand by the table that produces this fruit. Look at the list. Is this what your environment, your home life, your, your times with your friends and your places that you are, or let me call it your secret space? Is it filled with a lot of this? 
Is this the fruit of what you feel? And listen, I want you to understand we all have this war and this struggle. I believe Apostle Paul said it best in Romans chapter 7. He says, look, the things that I want to do, that's not what I do. And the things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I end up doing. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of sin? He's talking about this inner war between the flesh and the flesh. And the spirit, you see, the spirit wants me to produce good things. The flesh wants me to do the opposite. Let's go to the, it says, um, let's start back at but, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. I'm going to come over to this table. Let's read these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Goodness. Did we say patience? Did we, did we say patience? Let me skip that one. Let's go back and do patience. <laughs> they, um, there's an old saying that says, what? Patience is a virtue. Catch it if you can. Right? Seldom found in women, never found in man. I think it was something like that. Or was it the other way? I, I, don't, I can't remember. But patience, okay? Let's go start back at, at um, patience. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our Lies, Paul's. Say that part again. In every part of our lives. If you want to produce this fruit, you must be willing to allow the Spirit of God to lead you in every part of your life. Life is full of challenges, isn't it? Somebody's already ready for the football game, I think. <laughs> okay. But life is full of challenges, am I correct? So when you think about this, I want you to understand that, that as we begin to e e evaluate situations and decisions in our life, are we allowing the Spirit to lead? Or are we going to what feels natural and what feels good? Pastor, you don't understand. I mean, my wife, she just gets on my last nerve and the nerve after that. And so what? So what are you going to do? Well, I mean, I normally cuss her out. <laughs> or I normally just, just, you know, get in the car and I, you know, kick, spin gravel and break traction and get out. Or are you willing to come over to the Spirit and Listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit of God telling you in that moment, no matter that you feel violated, no matter that you feel disrespected, no matter that you're upset and you're angry, are you willing to turn to the Spirit of God and say, God, you remember the covenant I made with you? I remember it. And that covenant says that I'm going to let you be God on the throne of my life. I'm not going to, going to, going to respond the way that I want to. Instead, I'm going to, going to gravitate to the Spirit because, Lord, your Spirit produces love in me. Love is that unconditional agape love that no matter how I feel, I unconditionally love my wife. See, the joy, the joy that you give God is one that can't be taken away by circumstances. I'm not just happy. Happy means happenstances, something happening that made me good. Joy, deeper than it all. And God, um, I, I, I have peace even in the midst of the storm. I have peace. Doesn't that sound good? We got to fight for this. We got to fight for this and we got we to really turn and make sure that, that we are keeping our eyes on who? Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. 
Will you allow the Holy Spirit of God to transform your family, your life, your relationships? Next slide, please. I want to throw a couple of situations at you. Death in the family happens. Where do you go? Do you lean more to how you feel? You know, God, we prayed that, that mama wouldn't die. We prayed that you would heal her, and it didn't work. I tried that God stuff. I, I'm now angry. I'm now bitter. I'm now mad. I, 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 I'm upset. And, and you know what? I'm getting farther and further away from listening to any of God's stuff. I'm going to go with how I feel. You say, well, pastor, you know, grief, grief is tough and, and we're going through things. And what I'm telling you is in the midst of the grief, in the midst of the tough times, man, grab hold of God. When the things get darkest and you, you, you can't see clearly which way to go, grab hold of God. Allow the spirit of God to produce the right fruit in you. I remember I shared last hour my wife and I, um, I'm one of the few guys that can say I love my mother-in-law. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I loved Eunice so much. And those that knew her knew she was a wonderful woman of God. She probably knew some of you before we introduced you to her because she was on Facebook. She was a queen on Facebook. Um, man, sometimes we would look up and she would tell us, hey, you know such and such has a birthday today. We'd go, what? How do you know? She said, oh, such and such, I'm had surgery today. What? How did you know? I mean, she had Facebook down. She was a wonderful woman of God. And I remember one day, my wife and I were about to head out to work, and um, man, the Spirit of God told Dee to just check on her mom. She had called her mom, who was downstairs. She stayed in our um, basement, and you know, she called her mom, are you, are you, how you doing? And she said, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't worry about me. Y'all go ahead to your event, do your thing. We came down the steps and Dee, following and listening to the Spirit of God, just had in her spirit, no, I'm going downstairs to look at mom. She goes down and when she goes down to see mom, mom is struggling breathing. So how many of you men know when your wife call your name a certain kind of way? You know, there's the trant, and you know you did something, right? Okay, and then there's the, you know, just kind of a different tone that's used. And I knew my wife needed help. I came running down the steps and got down, and I saw mom. She was really struggling. We helped her. I helped her get up the steps, and, and man, we got her in the car. We took her to her doctor's. Her doctor came out, and this was during COVID. He had this whole, like, you know, hazmat suit on. They didn't let people in. You know, any of you guys remember those times? I mean, you couldn't go into the office. They would come out. She had to stay in the car, and they tested her, and he turned to her and said, Dr. Scott, I, I think you have COVID. And he says, and not only do you have COVID, but your oxygen levels are so low, you need to go to the hospital right now. So we rushed her over to the hospital, not knowing 17 days later, we would never see her again. Not knowing, and as we knew that she was, um, you know, we're getting the updates from the hospital, we were praying and praying, and God, I'm, guys, I'm telling you, I, I prayed. I prayed like, have you had one of those times where you prayed like never before and you get up and you brush your knees off and say, I know God heard that one. <laughs> I know he heard that one. And I came to Dee and I said, baby, I got peace. God is going to heal her. He did. He healed her. He took her home. What? And inside of me, there is disappointment, there is grief, there is hurt. I'm looking and I'm questioning God, like, God, what happened here? But I still hold on. 
I still hold on to the cross. I still believe and I still hold on to my faith and I still choose to now live by the spirit and not by the flesh. Does that make sense? Let's look at another one. At work, you got a chance to cheat and win. Ever been there before? <laughs> I see some hairs bobbing, right? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Are you going to go to what feels natural or are you going to go to the Spirit? Are you going to turn and do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do because you want to produce the right fruit in your life? Or are you going to choose to just get a, a quick advantage? Let's look at the next one. <laughs> How many of you have ever awoken with feelings? Was it Alfalfa that used to say feelings? Right? It's one of them, one of the... One of the um, songs he used to sing, right? But the thing about it is this. Have you ever woken, awakened and, you know, oh, my gosh, I, I just feel blah today. I feel like I just, I'm just mad. Or I feel like I just don't want to do. In those moments, are you going to turn to the spirit or are you going to fulfill the desires of the flesh? Next one, please. Have you ever heard the Spirit of God in the midst of a conversation, maybe telling you to leave, telling you to not do something? And in the midst of it all, you have this choice. Are you going to listen or are you going to do what feels right to you? Next slide. How about times that the Spirit of God may tell you to stop and pray? Have you ever had that happen? And you go, God, um, I'm right in the middle of my work environment. God, um, I'm late for a meeting, and I, I hear you telling me to pray. A friend of mine um, shared a story with me. Um, matter of fact, he's here today, and I'm going to share that story, Sam. Um, he had a, he was awakened one night around 2, 2.30 in the morning, and Sam, forgive me if I don't have that time frame correct, but God woke him and told him to pray. And told him to pray at the time he was a youth group leader, pray for a specific young man. And so he just started praying for this young man. He didn't know why. The next day, he reached out to that young man and he asked him, he was like, what, where you been? What's been going on? And the young man began to tell him a story of how he was out hanging out. And about 2, 2.30 in the morning, he was surrounded by some guys that was going to take his life. And it was only the grace of God that he got out of it. Sam tells me of just how clear he knew then that when God tells him to stop and pray, what should he do? Stop and pray. Let's do that, can we? When you hear the voice of God, the Spirit of God, stop and listen. Next slide, please. So let's talk about evil fruit. Evil fruit just is proof that the fleshly desires have been given control and free reign. And it affects your vertical and your horizontal relationships when you do this. Next slide. Let's look at this list of evil fruits. Can we read those together? Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, Sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. I want you to look at that list. Are these things that are in existence in your life right now? You say, Pastor, I have about two or three of them that are in, in full force in my life. 
I have two or three of them that I struggle with and I know constantly I tend to resort to my flesh instead of to the spirit. Give those to the Lord. Give those to the Lord. What a great time to give it all to the Lord. Next slide, I want to show you good fruit. The good fruit, as we've talked about, is proof that the Holy Spirit has been given control and free reign instead of the flesh. And again, it improves your vertical and your horizontal. Next slide. Let's read these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Do you have those in your life today? Do you want those in your life today? You can live a victorious Christian life. You can live a life that's filled with these things instead of those. You are not a slave to what you think you're a slave to. For many of us, we may feel like we're in bondage, like, Pastor, you don't know, I just can't stop it. It's almost like an addiction. And I'm telling you that you've been given too much to your flesh. You've been feeding your flesh, saying yes to your flesh so much more. Last hour, I, I missed um, being able to give a spiritual tool to everyone. My wife and I use a tool called fasting. We go on 21-day fast, and here's why. Because during the fast, we push our flesh away. And we spend more time with the Spirit. Then we come back and reset our lives, and you sometimes start feeling what happening. You start getting closer and closer. At times we realize if we're overtaken in certain areas, again, we don't mind taking time to fast and pray and spending more time with the Spirit of God. So when those trials come, when the struggles come, when the hard times come, when the temptation comes, how many of you struggle with temptation, amen? We're human. When those things happen, I have the strength to grab hold of the Spirit of God in those moments. I have strength to live out what is spiritual and not what is fleshly. But whatever you feed the most is going to be the strongest. Whatever you serve the most, it's going to be the strongest. I want to challenge you today. Let's stand to our feet. Jamie, would you bring the final slide up? I'd like us to read this final verse together. This final verse, let's read it together. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Amen? 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 Listen, live a victorious Christian life. Let God win. Glorify the Spirit, not the flesh. As the worship team sings, I want to challenge you. Maybe you need to nail some passions to the cross. Maybe you need to surrender some things. Maybe you need to make sure God knows and hears that you want this victory over what you're struggling with. May God bless you. May he keep you. And may he help you on your journey living this Christian life.